Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at Cameron MC on Z on Twitter. And I want to talk to you about how you can get the IMAP mail messages inside of UiPath Studio. So let's take a look at how UiPath can connect to Gmail. I'm going to start this off by creating a new process project and I'll call it connect to Gmail. I'll put that in as the description as well. I always feel obligated to. And as that's working, I'm actually going to open up my email account. So you can see I've got this email account for who is this? It's rpa at gmail.com. And I want to connect to this email account. Now, here's one thing you need to do right off the bat. You need to actually go into your security settings. If I can find out how to do that, manage your Google account. And if you're going to just do a, an IMAP mapping to Gmail, you got to play around with your security. So right there, I've got my security setting. I don't have two-step verification or sign in with your phone enabled. If you do, that's going to cause you problems when you try and connect. But even with those things turned off, I still need to allow less secure applications to connect. By default, uh, the UiPath won't be able to access your Gmail account. So you have to go into your account and say, turn on access for less secure apps. And once that's committed and put in there, you're going to be able to connect from UiPath. So that means I go back in here. My project is opened up, so I'm going to open the main window and I'm going to dig into app integration. And in order to connect to Gmail, I need to choose the IMAP option. So I go to IMAP and I say get IMAP mail messages and drop that activity right there. Now there's a fair bit to configure here. If you were just configuring this for your local Outlook, you wouldn't have quite as many things to configure here. But there's a little bit more here. So one thing you want to configure is the port. It's going to be listening on 993. I think that's the default. You want imap.gmail.com to be here. Now, does anybody notice what I've done wrong? I have forgot to put this in double quotes. Do not make the same mistake as I do because that will cause all sorts of errors as soon as you try and run the application. So make sure you put everything in quotes here. I'm not referencing variables. I need my email address in quotes as well, and that's rpa at gmail.com. Let me see if I've got rpa at gmail.com written anywhere. I believe I do. There it is. That's my email address. And please, don't anybody look as I write my password in. It's where the great planes begin. Again, I didn't put it in double quotes. Great tragically hip song there. And I think that's good. Now, one option is only unread messages. That's a good idea to check that if you've got a thousand things in your email account. If you actually look at my Gmail account here, you'll see that I've only got five or six different entries in it. So it's not gonna kill me by going in and, and just pulling everything in, right? A critical security alert. That was me doing the less secure apps thing. Didn't like that, a few orders, and then a email from Cameron McKenzie and one from Callie Jones about Narwhal. So, uh, so I think I can load all of those and, and not uh, put, put any pressure on the amount of memory and processing power in my computer. Okay, is everything there? Uh, delete messages? No. Mark is red? No. Only unread messages? No. Get rid of that. Now, one thing I do want is to put all of these messages into a variable. So I don't have one as a variable. So when this runs, it's going to throw everything into a variable. So I'm going to click down here to add a variable. The variable type is going to be of type list. So I browse for types and I type in list and I can find the version four system collection generic list right there. That T can be anything. I don't want it to be just anything though. I want it to be a mail message. And there we go. We have the mail message. I'll do another tutorial with female messages. Right now it's just the mail one. And so I'm going to get a list of mail messages. I always double check that. Sometimes I I just select something incorrectly and it messes everything up. And so I've got a variable now. I'm going to call it email messages. And when this IMAP mail message process runs and pulls all of the emails from Gmail, I want it to output all of that data into this variable here, email messages. And so that's where this variable comes into play right here. Now, after I've got all these email messages, well, what do I want to do with them? I guess I could process the attachments. I could, uh, uh, you know, inspect them for certain text strings. Right now, I'm just going to print out the subject line for each order, right? Like, I'm not going to do anything too complicated right now. I just want to show you how this works. So back to UiPath. 
I'm going to come in here, I'm going to add a programming element for, oh, you know what? No, not a programming element. I'm not working on a data table. I'm going to do a control workflow element and specifically a for each element. And for each email that is in mail messages, I think mail messages was the property, no, email messages. Look at me messing things up. For each email in email messages, I want to display in a uh, text field, a text field, no, it's not a text field, a message field, a message dialog box, I think would be the correct term. I want to display just the subject of the message and I would type that in here. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but I actually did something, well, I wouldn't say I did something wrong, but there's a, a step that's been missed right now and this isn't going to work the way I want it to unless I actually tell the for each loop that everything inside of this list of email messages is, an, is a mail message object. So you see right here in the properties view, it says email messages is what we're going to be looping through, but it's only going to pull things out as lazy objects. And I don't want that. I want them to be pulled out as mail messages so that I can access the different properties and methods of the mail message object. And so that's one little change I had to make there. Make sure you set that type argument to be mail message. And if you click from the drop down box, sometimes I've, you know, I've clicked the wrong one and uh, things don't work. So just be careful when you do that. But now that I've specified mail message, I can actually access properties of the mail message object using dot notation. So I can say email dot subject and I guess dot two string to get it as a string representation. I click control S to save that. And now this should go through all of my Gmail messages and print out the subject line for each of them. So I'm going to save this. So click save and then I'm going to click run and I'm going to see, you know, right now it's uh, did I put the wrong variable in or did I forget to put something in double quotes? I'm going to double check my get IMAP there, password, username, Okay, I think all that looks good. Okay, I'm confident I'm gonna run, this is gonna work. And look at that, errors on a processing 993. And somehow, mm, 993 doesn't actually have to be in quotes because it's numeric. So that was a mistake on my end. I will run this now. And here, as the application goes, you can see it's now giving me all of the different elements from that, from my email. So here we see my email and that just got buried uh, behind the page a little bit, but right now there's the email. So you see critical security alert is that one. Verify order, order, verified order, verified order. Where are the narwhals? And finally, you got a great handle, Mr. RPA at gmail.com. And so there you go. That's all there is to figuring out how to connect to Gmail and looping through all of the message messages in your Gmail account. And there you go. That's how easy it is to get your IMAP messages. In this case, it was Gmail, but that should work with any IMAP server that you're connecting to. And anyways, if you want to learn more about UiPath or anything to do with enterprise software development, head over to theserverside.com. I've got lots of articles over there. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.